Hello and welcome to Drunk on Tea. Today I'm going to show you how to paint this classic Bretonian bowman for Warhammer Fantasy. So to start with I've primed the model with white. This will give us a nice light base coat to work from for all of the colours we're going to apply. So the first step is I'm coming in with some Avalanche Sunset and I'm going to paint half of his coat. So make sure you draw a line down the back in roughly the middle, keeping this nice and neat and straight as this will be the marker to work from. By doing the yellow first, it's much easier to go over with darker colours if we make any mistakes. Just draw your line and using that, cover that half of the coat with a couple of coats of Avalanche Sunset. So yellow can be quite hard to get good coverage. But by working off of a white base coat and in just a couple of layers we should get a nice solid cover of yellow all over this half of the coat. And on the other half of the jacket I'm just using the button line as the mark for the halfway mark. There's a nice raised spot so I just paint up to that with the Avalanche Sunset and bring it around the model to meet the other part we've already painted. Try and be nice and neat at this stage, but it doesn't matter if you get some yellow on the other areas, as we will cover these over with darker colours later on. After the first coat is still slightly patchy coverage, so I'm coming back in with the second coat of Avalanche Sunset, just to give us a nice solid cover all over that half of the jacket. with a couple of coats applied, you can see we've got a nice solid base cover of yellow all over half of his jacket. So next I'm coming in with some McCrag blue and I'm going to apply this on the other half. So to start with I'm coming up to that line of yellow I applied before, coming right up to it, being nice and neat, keeping the line nice and straight and that gives me my marker to work from to paint the rest of the jacket. Once again, this will probably take a couple of coats to get a nice solid cover. But just work your way around the jacket, being nice and neat, covering it all with a couple of coats of McCrag Blue until we've got a nice solid cover all over that jacket. So this is gonna be a mix of sort of a retro color scheme, but with a few modern elements. I'm getting these models ready to be used in the old world when it drops. After a couple of coats from a crag blue, you can see we've built a nice solid cover all over that jacket. So now I'm coming in with some dryad bark, and for this I'm going to paint anything wood. So that's the bow here in his hands and the arrow he's got tied around his waist. So catch all of that with a couple of coats of dryad bark. So are you looking forward to the old world? What armies are you looking forward to bringing back and playing with again? Let me know in the comments below what armies you're planning to collect when the old world comes out. And there we are, after a couple of coats of dryad bark, we've got a nice solid wood colour to all of that wood. So now I'm just going to paint the fletching, so I'm coming in with some Mephiston red. I'm just going to catch the feathers here at the top of the arrows. A 
couple of coats of my fist in red. Got a nice solid cover on the top of those arrows. So now I'm coming in with some Rhinox hide. I'm gonna paint all of the leather. So that's this around his face and neck. It's got a pad on his arm as well, holding the bow. And he's got the belt going around his waist with a pouch and his boots as well. So I'm gonna catch all of these areas with a couple of coats of Rhinox hide to give us a good solid base for painting our leather colors on. So make sure you catch this pouch here around his waist and the belt going all the way around as well. After a couple of coats, we built a nice solid cover of Rhinox hide all over those leather areas. So now the next thing I'm going to paint is his tights. So I'm coming in with some Corvus black with a couple of coats. I'm just going to paint his tights or leggings just here. And this will take a couple of coats to get a solid cover off of the white base coat keeping it nice and thin, build up to that solid cover without obscuring any detail. And with those leggings painted, there's only a couple of colors left to apply now. So next I'm gonna paint his skin so I'm coming with some Bugman's Glow. I'm gonna catch his face in here and his hands as well. Obviously being careful when you're around other colors we've already painted, especially the yellow. But just by working a couple of thin coats, keeping good control of your brush, you can cover all of that skin with a couple of coats of Bugman's Glow. After a couple of coats, we've got a nice solid skin color to all of his flesh. So now the final base coat is I'm coming in with some lead belcher. I'm gonna paint anything metallic. So I'm gonna paint his helmet here, the tips of the arrows, and he's got a buckle on his belt as well. So I catch all of these areas with a little bit of lead belcher. and that's the base coat applied. So the next step now is we'll start shading. So first of all, I'm coming in with some Reichland Flesh Shade. I'm gonna apply this over the Bugman's Glow. So that's just over his face and hands. Make sure this doesn't pull too much, but it does work its way into the recesses to give us some definition to that skin. And now I'm coming in with some Known Oil. I'm just gonna shade everything else with some Known Oil. So this is all over the jacket, all over the wood, all over every other base color other than the skin. Just work it into any recesses. Try and stop it from pooling. If it does pull too much, come in with a dry brush and wick some of it away. Just shade all of the model with a little bit of known oil. If you're enjoying the video, please press like. If you want more videos, press the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. And with those shades dried, you can see it's really added some definition to those colors on the model. Now the first highlight I'm gonna apply is on that jacket. So I'm coming in with some Avalanche Sunset. 
and I'm going to apply this on all of the areas where the shade didn't settle. So it's like these creases here, you can see the known oil in the recesses. So I'm coming in on either side of it and applying some thin Avalan Sunset just to help bring it back up to that original brighter colour. Keep the paint nice and thin here and just work your way around and wherever the shade didn't settle, bring it back up to colour with some Avalan Sunset. With that applied, you can see it started to bring that colour back up, allowing us to work on it to add some of our highlights. So next, I'm coming in with a 50-50 mix of Avalan Sunset and Uriel Yellow, applying this sort of in the middle of where we applied those previous steps. So wherever we just applied some Avalan Sunset, I'm coming into the centre of those areas, and applying a bit of this mix, nice and thin, just to help build up that transition to a brighter highlight. Now I'm coming in with some pure Uriel yellow, doing this like an edge highlight on all of the sharpest points. So on the tops of any folds, any sharp creases or prominent lines, I'm just giving a thin edge highlight of Uriel yellow, just to make them stand out. So just work your way around the model, pick out all the sharpest points with a thin edge highlight of Uriel yellow. Now I'm coming in with some McCrag blue. I'm going to basically do the same as we just did on the yellow, but on the blue half. So wherever the shades didn't settle, coming in on either side of that with some thin McCrag blue to help bring it back up to its original brighter color. So once again, just work your way around this half of the coat, picking out all of the areas the shade didn't settle with some McCrag blue. Now I'm going in with a 50-50 mix of McCrag Blue and Altdorf Guard Blue. Once again, applying this in the middle of where we just applied the McCrag Blue. Keep this nice and thin, and work your way around, and in the middle of where we just applied our previous steps, apply a little bit of this 50-50 mix to help brighten it back up towards a highlight. Now with some pure Altdorf Guard Blue. And once again, applying this in the middle of that previous step. It's an extra stage of highlight, just to help really brighten those areas and make all of those ray spots stand out. So focus this where the light will catch the most. So on the top of surfaces and the brightest points, just put a little bit of Altdorf Guard Blue. Now there's just one final edge highlight now of Calgar Blue. 
to put this on all of the very sharpest points as a thin edge highlight over all of that blue or just the most raised areas and sharpest points just put a thin edge highlight of Calgar blue to really add interest to those most raised areas. And that's the jacket highlighted. You can see we've really worked from those shadows up to a nice bright highlight all over both halves of that jacket. So now I'm coming in with some Bane Blade Brown. I'm gonna highlight the wood. So for the arrows here, I'm just doing a thin edge highlight on all of the most raised and pronounced parts. And for the bow, I'm just dry brushing lightly all over being careful not to catch the hand, just to highlight the bow. And that's the wood highlighted. So now the next step is I'm gonna highlight the fletching on the arrows. So for this, I'm coming in with some Wild Rider Red, and I'm just applying some spots on all the most raised points of all of those feathers. You can see they've got quite pronounced tips to all the feathers, so just catch all of those with a little spot of Wild Rider Red. That's the arrows are now highlighted so the next step is I'm gonna start highlighting the skin. So I'm coming in with some Bugman's Glow. I'm applying this on the areas that the shade didn't settle. So wherever the shade has gone into a recess, I'm coming in on either side with some thin Bugman's Glow to help build it back up to its original color. that first coat applied you can see we've built some definition back into the face. Now I'm coming in with some Cadian Flesh Tone and we're going to apply this sort of in the middle of those areas that we just applied the Bugman's Glow. Focusing onto the more upwards facing and raised points I'm just putting some small spots of thinned Cadian Flesh Tone in the middle of those areas that we just applied the Bugman's Glow. And finally, with some Kislev Flesh, it's gonna pick out the most prominent raised points with a little spot of this paint. So it's things here like the tip of his nose, his bottom lip, the cheeks, and any knuckles on the hand or pronounced points. I just put a little spot of Kislev Flesh. And that's the skin highlighted. So the next step is I'm gonna paint the eyes to complete the face. So for this, I come in with a little bit of black. I'm gonna put a thin horizontal line into the eye socket, being nice and neat with this, trying to not get it over anything else. And then with some white, I'm gonna put another horizontal line within that black we just applied. And then finally, with some Abaddon Black, I do a small vertical line in the middle of the white. And that is the face completed now that the eyes are painted up. So next, I'm coming in with some Mechanica Standard Grey. I'm gonna highlight any of the pronounced folds and lines on these tights. There's just a few on here. Any of the more prominent areas, 
creases, folds and spots. Just catch them with a thin line of Mechanica Standard Grey. And with the tights highlighted, there's only a couple of things left to highlight now. First of all, I'm coming with some Gorthor Brown. I'm gonna highlight some parts of the leather. So I'm doing this guard here on his wrist. I'm also gonna highlight the belt around his waist as well. So just catch the prominent areas of this with an edge highlight of Gorthor Brown. Now for the rest of the leather, I'm coming in with a 50-50 mix of Mournfang Brown and Rhinox Hide. I'm applying this sort of in the middle of all of the areas that the shade didn't settle on that Rhinox hide. So this is going to give these areas a rough, worn leather appearance. So pick some large areas and apply a thin coat of this mix over anywhere that the shade didn't settle to help build up to a nice highlight to give us that worn leather appearance. first mix applied you can see it's brightened up some areas for us to work off to keep highlighting the leather so now I come in with some Mournfang brown once again keeping this really nice and thin applying this in the middle of that previous step so if it's near an edge I work it towards the edge if it's on sort of a flatter central area I work it towards the middle of that patch I'm going to keep doing this with several colors to build up a really nice transition for a nice worn beaten leather look. And with the Mournfang Brown applied, you can see it's brightened up those spots a little bit more. So now I'm coming in with a 50-50 mix of Mournfang Brown and XV88. And once again, in the middle of the previous steps, applying a little bit of this mix. So each one of these colors is a slightly smaller area. We're building up towards the most brightest colors at the brightest points on all of this leather. With that mix applied, you can really see that transition is starting to build up now. So now I come in with some pure XV88 and focusing this once again into the middle of those areas. There's a much smaller spot here on the collar, really focusing it towards the edge. On the boots, it's the edges and in the real center of these spots, this is really gonna build up and we're gonna get that worn beaten leather look. And with that XV88 applied, you can really see that transitions built up now to a nice worn look on that leather. So now I just come in with some Carrick Stone. And with this, I'm doing like a scratch edge highlight and putting spots right in the very middle of those previous layers. So for the edge highlight, you can be very scratchy with this. It doesn't need to be a perfect line. And you can sort of stipple it into the middle of those areas that we've been applying the other colors to. And this will really give it that beaten leather look all over the model. And with that applied, that's the leather finished. It's really got that worn look of old leather. So now I'm coming in with some Corvus Black and I'm just going to paint the buttons on the jacket. Be nice and neat, you don't want to get this over any of the yellow we painted and highlighted. Just pick out those buttons with a coat of Corvus Black. 
and with those buttons painted there's now just one thing left to highlight and that will be all of the metal on the model. So for this I'm coming in with some storm hose silver I'm just applying an edge highlight to the sharpest points of the arrowheads and around the brim of his hat and a little spill on the top of it as well. And that is a classic Bretonian bowman painted up ready for the old world. So please let me know in the comments below which army you're most looking forward to seeing in the old world. And thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and happy painting.